And I think we are live. Let me just double check the technology. Stay with me, everybody. I think you're on mute. I am on mute. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, we made We've it. We've already got some, some people watching, so we'll just wait for Shay to come on. She's having a crack at it. And um, we can get, oh, look at her background, Shay. Yeah, isn't it great? <laughs> I, I want one of those. We can play with that. We're live, so I don't know how much people want to watch us play with Zoom settings, but. <laughs> Uh, yeah, better, better not. Right? I'm likely to log us all out. <laughs> <laughs> we are live on Facebook. We've even got some audience already, I can see. Have Welcome we? to all of our watchers. Good all afternoon. Right. Oh. Yeah, lovely to see you all. I'm the tech person, <laughs> so now I'm going to hand over to Craig, who is hosting our little event today, and uh, I'll take a backward step for a second. <laughs> Yes, so you're technically co-hosting. So yeah, thank you to all the people here joining us today. So this topic's about calling the star seeds and um, a little bit of info on what it's like to like channel information from the other side. <laughs> <laughs> so um, yeah, just before we... Um, get into the details of things we might just go quickly around the room and a little bit of uh info about 
who we are and uh, what it is we're doing. A um, little bit of information about the, the Warriors of Light, your chapters, and so on. We'll start with you, Christy, seeing as though you started the ball rolling. I knew you were going to say that. Is that because I'm psychic? No. <laughs> All right. Uh, my name is Christy Lee Rackham. Um, gosh, where do we start? My chapter for the Warriors of Light book is called The Multidimensional Neurodivergent Being, which I believe is quite a mouthful, especially to try to say it fast after a couple of drinks. <laughs> Don't try that at home. Uh, <laughs> essentially, uh, look, I, I find it hard to bring in what I do and who I am into any kind of third dimensional uh, spatial container. And I've mm. always found this to be a massive trouble because I tend to bridge two worlds. I bridge the medical health healing kind of more traditional allopathic medicine side of things as um, a trained nurse and a trained massage therapist. And I've done a uh, scolarology and I've done a whole bunch of certificates in different health modalities. But I've always been able to channel. I've always had an awareness of other realms. I've, uh, you know, spent a lot of time in other timelines, other places, uh, and mm. feeling very comfortable in those places, often more comfortable than I felt as a human most yeah. of the time. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm not the only one. All of us authors have uh, a similar experience. So I spent a good 20 or 30 years um, really trying to find my way on, on planet Earth. And I had a number of guides who had been with me for a very long time and uh, would come and, come and go and I'd be assigned different people to assist mm -hmm. me and to give me different information and um, technologies for me to then coalesce large quantities of data, bring it all into a framework that humans could understand in practical terms for their own growth, evolution, soul's expansion and journey. So that's in essence what I do. Um, what I have since come to find is that the medical term for what I do is neurodivergence or who I am. Um, sorry about, I've got some. Oh, where did she go? She just dropped off. <laughs> so I, I can I can relate. We'll see if she just comes back. How can she drop off? She was um, the host. Um, anyway, I can relate to that uh, level that she's speaking to about mm. um, the, the information when you're channeling and, and you, you find something. For me, I'm a dream interpreter. Um, I get in my information straight out of the dream state or um, or through meditations. So I can uh, really um, relate to that level of consciousness where you've got this download of information and then you've got to ha find a way to express it through mm. uh, through words. Mm. Christy, you're back. <laughs> I talked us through the gap. <laughs> Good on you. The, the beautiful thing about it is I was just saying to my partner before we came live, um, I used to work in television and event management. And so we would always have technical difficulties 30 seconds before going live mm. to television. And so I'm no stranger to these kinds of issues. So I've always got a backup plan in the background. It just took me nice. a second to get back online. Anyway, thank you for covering. Uh, the, I was almost done. I think all I had to say was, you know, I discovered that I was neurodivergent in in context of the me medicalization and the pathologization of um, different kinds of wiring, people who are born different, physiologically mm -hmm. speaking. So that was where I was at. I can hand it back over to whoever was talking next. Veronica, your turn. How are you going? <laughs> oh, where do I start? Um, I probably have come back to um, knowing what I was and or who I am um, later in life after an illness. So, but as a little kid, uh, like Shay, I had a, an imaginary friend who was Georgie. And um, I think I talk about him in the chapter. And then, of course, you know, when you're getting older and um, it's kind of poo pooed to talk to that, you know 
the the spirit next to you. Um, but again, when I was um, uh, older, I started to do automatic writing, but I didn't know that that's what it was. I never knew terminologies for everything. I just did it, you know. And um, and so I would um, be writing away, and and at the end, I got this Elijah. It, so he had grown with me and he was Elijah and then later on when I learned angelic Reiki and started working more with the angelic realms Elijah um Elijah of course is Saint Alphon who is um the archangel that takes your prayers to heaven and uh, so this is who this being has always been there in the background that supported me and nudged me in a way to to get back on path you know um so, and what got me back on path was I was diagnosed with um, lupus in my early 30s. So um, before that, I was, you know, living the dream, you know, two houses, three cars, all of that. Um, and that was what I thought life was about. But then, you know, what do they say? Life is what happens to you when you're busy making other plans. So, um, of course, the universe had another idea for me. And um, so then, you know, and, and like a lot of you, I suppose, as a little kid, I'd pick up rocks and pick flowers and I was very noticed animals and especially if an animal was out of place, you know, like if you saw a, a willy wagtail, you know, yelling at you or from the fence, you know, and there's a message there, but, you know, I couldn't quite figure out the message. So um, so okay. all of that came together, you know, over, over um, time. And then um, like Christy, I've had lots of guides and then, um, when the galactic started to step in, it was like, oh, no, 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 not going there. You know, I didn't want to play with the galactic beings, you know, um, but they were insistent and um, and they came to me more through uh, crystal skulls um, to start with. And, um, and of course, I've got Lord Ashtar at, works with me and helped me through my uh, almost passing and leaving the planet stage. So, um, you know, um, I'm, I'm, used to them I suppose um, yeah so it's been fun been an interesting journey um, to do this you know to write the chapter in the book was really stepping out of my comfort zone even though I always wanted to be an author but um, when I was um, and, and it is in my chapter um, when I was lying in hospital you know waiting to decide whether I'm staying or going um, Lord Ashtar said we are no longer light workers um, those of us who are way showers, if you like, are warriors of the light. So when I saw the book come up, I knew that, you know, there's a sign. <laughs> so I'm going to jump uh, in there as well. Interestingly, and for those of you, you who are listening as well, we've never met before this no. moment. Mm. And some of the similarities in the messages mm. and the information we've been getting are, are affirming for us yeah. as well yeah. as hopefully for you because uh way showers was a term that i was also given several yeah. years ago for what we were to do next as well so it's really beautiful to to see that synergy amongst us but but also you know calling out to all of you out there who've been mm. getting similar messages yeah um yeah. You know, we're we're all finding our tribe. We're finding our people. We're finding those of us who are supposed to connect in order to exactly. uh, bring this ascension into full force. So I just wanted to, to know that. It's yeah, really exactly. Yeah. You know, um, yeah, and and I believe that we've all met um, for the next stage, so that we've all got um, our own support systems in place, being with each other. So yeah, it's been a, been a really great experience, of course you know, as, as you all probably have felt, um, it's brought up a lot of things for us all to, you know, look at within ourselves. Um, but, you know, that's what this life is about, you know, to get through to your ascension is to leave behind all the things that no longer serve you, you know, mm -hmm. so uh, let your baggage go. You know, and I always say it's like um, an onion, you know, you're peeling away the layers one at a time. You know, and once you think, oh, yeah, I'm right now, you know, like, oh, I'm pretty good. You know, I'm there, you know, and then they go, that's what you think. <laughs> so, yeah, so lovely to connect with everybody today. Yes, that, that was great. And I especially like the part where you hinted on the part of channeling that's about universal messages being 
basically present around us all the time all through time. animal mm. science, mm. through um, synchronicities, through yeah. uh, numerology, like the typical 1111 or 1133 yeah. or whatever it is. Um, I get quite a few of them. As, yeah, as the numbers, well. yeah. Mm. Yeah, as, as and well. feathers. Sometimes people will pick up a feather, you know. And, and look, I've taught classes where we're in an enclosed room and a feather will fall down from the ceiling and you go, how can that happen? You know, there's no open windows, there's no birds in the room. So how does the feather turn up? But, you know, they're signs. And just, we've got to be aware of the little signs, don't we? Yes. Yeah. It, it, everything is just so subtle. But just yeah. before we skip through, yes. <laughs> you, you highlighted something for the listeners that I'm sure they're going to want to know a little bit more about. Tell us a little bit more about the crystal skull meditations. Um, yeah, look, I... Um, or an experience. I've, yeah, yeah. I've only, like, I, I've done, uh, taken a lot of my angelic Reiki students because in angelic Reiki, you actually learn to to work with the archangels, the ascended masters and the, the galactic beings. So we tend to, um, they're more used to working with them. So I started to, to do some other like smaller workshops and um, working with the skulls. So that's sort of where I'm being guided to go. And the, the skulls are all sitting over there going, pick me, pick me. But I just, I did bring a little one with me today. Um, he's new and, um, and he's only just joined the family, if you can see him. He's um he's only a little one, so his name's Joey, or that's his what he's told me his name is, and he's Spherolite um is the crystal. Um, he, to me, he's very much like Ocean Jasper. So, um, but crystals have always just spoken to me. So it's like, you know, going into a crystal shop is terribly scary at times and expensive. <laughs> Do you know the properties of of that uh, crystal? Um, he, he is to um, to basically help um, expand and um, in a way give you a little bit of confidence so I knew he was meant to come at this time for me because you know I've I'm very comfortable sitting in the shadows and pushing other people forward I love promoting other people in the work <laughs> they do me too. Um, and, and I love sitting in the background going yeah yeah not me not me shush um, and I suppose through um, lockdown, etc., I haven't been able to teach because angelic Reiki is not taught over Zoom. It's taught face-to-face -face in group classes. Um, so, you know, it's just um, a new way to, well, it's given me time to, to do more work for me, you know, and learn more as, as, you know, I've gone along. So I suppose now the eight, eight, um, Stargate today, the Lionsgate has opened. It's like it's now or never. You know, it's it's for all of us, I think, um, mm. you know, that this Lionsgate is about stepping into what you're here to do. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. so. Absolutely. Nice, beautiful. And where can people find you? Um, I have a website, um, veronicarollinson.com. It is under reconstruction at the moment, but um, if they go there, there is a, um, a contact form and, um, yeah, and, and my... Um, Facebook page. I'm, I'm Veronica Rawlinson on Facebook, so you know you can go there too. <laughs> mm. Shay, any, any comments or any any thoughts? Um, yeah, well, I can, <laughs> um, yeah. So I my I guess my a little bit about me, my background. I um yeah, I was also came into this world with um with my. Uh, Skeeter, my imaginary friend, mm. who was with me from as soon as I could talk um, until I was five, and that's where my uh, my dad was. It's in my chapter, but my dad's a my dad was at the primary school that we were all going to, me and my brothers, and he was pretty he was pretty strict and cranky guy back then, and pretty um yeah he wasn't too happy for me to bring Skeeter, so I I dropped Skeeter at that stage, and I I guess I deviated a little bit away from my uh, to fit in I guess just mm. up until probably through teenage years in a way like part of me always stayed true to myself but another part of me deviated away from my truth and um, it all sort of came to 
heads. Um, when I, I met my teacher, one of my uh, main teachers, mentors, I met her in 2012. And, you know, and then from then on, she's, she's born on the same day um, as me. She's 20 years older than me. She's an incredible astrologer and um, yoga teacher, Reiki master, lots of she's psychic, lots of things. And um, she also had an imaginary friend when she was born and uh it stayed she it stayed with her as soon as I started doing part I had spontaneous past life recall then of so many settings of being an astrologer in many lifetimes and um as soon as I was with her I had all these rememberings of even my um skater came back and um yeah I think it's just been I think before like we always held on to a knowing of like a soul knowing of what we were supposed to be and all those messages like the, mm. you know, like the seeing feathers and numerology and in your heart, you're always knowing it means everything in the whole, everything is about that magic. But it's really now that it's so heightened because I guess for a while, like even 10 years or 12 years ago, it was more of a lonely path where you're just holding that mm in yourself and you know that it means everything and you know that the material world is really nothing compared to the spiritual realm but you haven't so much connected with everybody else that's activated it completely so you're sort of walking around lonely thinking look see this sign means this and other people are like no just come back be grounded be normal okay but this means this and they're like no they and people can't see it and you, you sort of get a bit like disheartened but stay magic in your own life um but I went and started teaching astrology in 2012 and doing readings because I had to I couldn't I couldn't block it out anymore it was like well mm. you're just deviating away from you and your soul and it's never going to work so yeah. um even though it was sort of slower doing astrology even back then in 2012 it was just sort of friends and family and um mm. But then it picked up and I was like, yeah, I mean, everything's astrology shows, evolutionary astrology shows all that's happening now. And, you know, it's in all the, all the, yeah, it, all the, it was all there. It's all written there. It's all written in the stars. <laughs> it is, it's just like the thought process that we, we come to this place with a contract and things to do. Mm. And I know for myself, um, the more that you learn to listen, the more that they understand that you listen, and the more you deviate from listening, <laughs> the worse it's going to get for you. <laughs> um, yeah. I was just so, looking at the chat, just jumping in there for a second. Erin, Erin Barry Cotter, she said her daughter has a very imaginary, a very present imaginary friend called Chivalry. She's now eleven, and uh, he hasn't been around that she knows of for quite some time. Uh, as a family, they've always welcomed him. That's amazing. Uh, tomorrow at 10, we've got a talk on heart portal parenting as well, which uh, is, you know, that's one of the mm. topics is how to encourage your children to, to maintain contact with their imaginary friends mm. as well. So that's really cool, Erin. Uh, sorry, I jumped in there, Craig. No, that was perfect. <laughs> I, I just only turned on the, the comments just a little, little bit before. Shay, oh. did you want to... Um, uh, share a little bit of uh, perspective for us. Yeah, perspective as far as like connecting or that it's okay. And do do you feel like you know this is becoming more of a common thing? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. So with even with astrology, with evolutionary astrology, and where where the times we're at. So I've been like um, sharing over the last couple of years. You know, these cycles that are happening now. These this beginning of this new earth is so huge because there are cycles within cycles within cycles, and some of the cycles are like a two thousand and twenty six million year cycle ending, and a twenty six thousand year mm. epoch ending, and the whole mate the patriarchal times ending, and the beginning of the matriarch, and moving into the age of Aquarius, and every single one of those cycles is entirely huge and all ending and all starting a new brand new new cycle and um as that happens it's like so this in the gene keys um which is one of mine um one of my things that i do so the whole involution is happening through this 22nd gateway in the i ching so the involution is where the spirit realm is moving down in on us because 
it's time now. They beforehand, um, it's really when we were in that last epoch of forgetting and we were sort of disconnected, even though in our hearts we knew it was the veil was still too thick from the spirit realm and our cosmic family. And um, besides the ones that were holding in their heart that magic that they knew, um, it, was, it wasn't a collective th- building of moving up. Um, so the spirit realm was not coming down to us because we weren't spending enough time believing, praying with mm. the magic because it was really the magic that was extracted from the patriarchal times more than anything. Um, and we were convinced or to forget our spirit and we were convinced and conditioned to think it's just a material world where everyone's walking around trying to think that's all that's there. Mm -hmm. And now the evolutionary gates happening through this 55th channel. And as we evolve as a species, because it's time, because it's written in every single prophecy, then the involution um, of the spirit realm is ready to involute into the matter and we're ready to ascend up. And I always, as soon as I knew about this, I always saw it as the Merkava. So I bought, um, yeah, yeah, the Merkava. Um, yeah, because we've got our involution and, and, and us evolving up to it. Um, so the spirit realm's in on us. So it's, it's not only is it normal and acceptable to have your, your spirit family and to channel them and to communicate with them, but it's it's necessary now because they're, they're I, I, I listened to Ishmael say something, Ishmael Perez, and he said um, there was for a long time, there was a lot of our star family up there unemployed just saying we're waiting <laughs> we're waiting for you to you know so every time yeah. I would see a client for anything you know healing or astrology I would always say okay I'm drawing you in and I'm so grateful and they're so mm. excited to be there they want they want this more than anything for us mm. to to have them there um it is, it is amazing and and I really love what you're saying about all those cycles um and, and it, it draws me back to, to us all operating as individual points of light on the planet as solitary practitioners. That's been required up until now to keep us safe in a, in a way. And all of those past lives that we've had that are happening simultaneously, because there is no time really, as we've talked about privately, all of these timelines are coalescing in this now moment, now happening. Uh, and they're all sort of the way the way I see it, the way it comes in for me is like we're, we're at the nexus point of dramatic shifting where all the timelines are, are mixed up together and coalescing. And it's really mm-hmm. a case of which timeline do you want to choose? Do you mm. want to continue to be a solitary, isolated, struggling, suffering uh person who's heavy in the mire of humanity Mm. or do you want to embrace this natural gift this ability this knowing that you've got inside your being that you're here for more than that and you know 30 years ago for me um as an 18 year old I started channeling uh, or being aware of them and I was assigned uh, a surgeon to help me with medical intuitive stuff Mm -hmm. and you know he was training me up and I didn't understand why, <laughs> you know, and then I'd have another guide come in and teach me something else. And and now we're all getting to this stage where all the things that we've learned, all the, the information that we've gathered from these uh, star people, from these alternate realities, is is technology that, that has been given to each one of us to pass on to humanity to, to lift us through this time of um, involution. I really love that term, involution. Um, into our incarnate star seed bodies, if you like. Um, I just, I, I'm so excited. It just makes me so happy because for, for so long we operate as lonely satellites circulating around a planet that doesn't make sense to us um, with people that don't feel like us. We feel like foreigners. We feel like aliens in a different country speaking a different language. So I know that the people out there as well are sensing this. That's why they've come on to listen today because they're like, finally, somebody is speaking my language. Somebody, people like us out there are um, 
are finally being visible, coming back to what, what Veronica was saying. We've got to all, not just us as leaders of the Great, Great Awakening, but all of us who are watching this and listening to this, it's time to stop hiding, stop being isolated and start coming together in community, which is part of what the Age of Aquarius is all about anyway and the end of the cycle. <laughs> Download finished. <laughs> that's that's perfect yes i uh, completely agree um that's that's where the star seed star seed is is a label and this is mm. this is where we kind of we've had this conversation <laughs> excuse me <laughs> um that's where we come to this point in, in the uh, a realization in in our lives where we um, we understand that we we're born in a place and we were born different. There was something wrong. We we don't quite fit. Um, we mm -hmm. we get torn up about humanity and the things that you know people do to other people. Uh, they they personally affect us and and they shouldn't because. You see that it doesn't affect the other people. There's definitely, um, I guess that's like a like a tripwire. The star seed is like, yeah, I could be a star seed. I don't know if I'm a star seed, but um, if you're here listening, uh, you got that curiosity. Uh, you're quite likely a star seed. I would say that you are one. But just before we jump on and move forwards, uh, Shay. Uh, where can people find you? Um, yeah, so I have a website as well, which is um, astrahealing.com.au. Um, yeah, so there, or, or just, yeah, just you, my name, like under Facebook, I'm, I'm just under my name, Shay Fairley. Yeah. Nice. All right. Um, so I might just talk uh, generally uh, for a short time. Or oh, what about me? What about me? Mm. I was going to um, say what about you. <laughs> so, uh, so my chapter in the Warriors of Light is about finding and listening to universal guidance. I call myself a channel for the multidimensional aspect of universal design to help guide those on their soul journey. Fancy. Um, it's quite a mouthful and I got that out of a meditation um, that Tash um, took us through where we were going to meet our higher self and you know we did that and then came out and I wrote that and I was like well that's that's pretty much it but um, I'm a Taurian I'm very grounded and it's not something I'd just like sprout out there I don't mind being the person to embody that, but long story short, I help people find their own soul guidance by learning how to listen to um, universal taps on the shoulders. Mm. Uh, that's about the easiest way to explain it. Uh, I have a chapter in this book and when this book is finished, uh, I have my full book coming up after that. It's called Alchemy of the Soul's Journey. Nice. And in that book, it takes the reader through a couple of thought processes, not a couple, a few <laughs> thought processes on how to elicit the information for themselves it's not just a, a story mm -hmm. of my life that leaves the reader feeling like they're uh, enthusiastic to get get into it and jump into it and then they go to jump and they go which way am i jumping mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> this is this is a little slow in, inwards journey uh, as i've come to realize every kind of spiritual growth is not an action to be taken externally it's an action to be taken internally, mm. um, if that makes sense to people. <laughs> um, so where I'd like to start with the, the whole star seed thing is a, a, a little bit of an overview. Now we jump back into the conversations of uh, channeling. Um, 
so we all come to this place from the Soul Collective on, on, a, on a mission. Um, those that have been here a few times before, we, we call them old souls. Um, there, there's dimensions, there's frequencies, there's planets people come from. And uh, if you listen to people like uh, Dolores Cannon when she was still alive and mm. she's up there watching us, <laughs> um, there's volunteers. So there, there might be brand new souls incarnating with a, a mission. So what uh, the difference between a, a volunteer and an old soul would be, uh, the volunteer might not have any um, previous karmic um, things to work out and might be able to uh, express their, um, what it is that they come, come to do uh, a little bit easier without so many, um, what, what would you call it? Traumas. <laughs> so, yeah, tra let's just use trauma. Let's use uh, the common terminology, <laughs> Because every soul has to, has to learn their lessons in this life. And we can place upon ourselves individual con contracts because we were placed in a family environment that said, you know, classic example is they, they call the kid or you got a parent that calls the kid stupid. Oh, you're stupid. Why'd you do that? Blah, blah, blah. They go through life and subconsciously they're thinking, oh, I'm stupid. Oh, I'm mm. stupid. Oh, I'm stupid. Um, that was me. <laughs> I had that. Uh, I had that experience. So um, I, I even had a, a high school teacher tell me. <laughs> um, he told me once that you don't have the intellectual, cap uh, intellectual capacity to even look at crosswords because I wasn't paying attention in, in um, woodwork class. <laughs> <laughs> um yes long story short I, I wasn't a good boy um so people come with like karmic lessons to learn and quite often uh, those karmic lessons have come from a previous life so we, we we were sent here to learn something maybe we did maybe we did learn learn it well but maybe we created a little bit of karma within the lifetime that we were in previously. And that carries over with the, um, what Dolores Cannon says, a, a cast of characters that, you know, we're all involved with. So there are good guys and there are bad guys. Mm -hmm. And what a lot of people don't, um want to go there in, in a mental capacity is you might be a volunteer to come to this world to be a bad guy um it is all to help mother gaia ascend and recalibrate ourselves because the evolution of the human being is no doubtedly it's stepping up big time stepping up and what i like to uh, give people as a bit of a thought of ex experiment is imagine you're going to stand in front of someone and as soon as they see your eyes they can know the inner depths of you how many people would be able to actually stand there and feel safe and comfortable with someone knowing the inner depths of you and that that's why i think everything's like an inwards journey so if we can come to the truths of ourselves, I know this to be a, a fact that's true. Um, the closer you come to the inner truth of yourself, the more you're able to connect, the more you're able to divine from, I, I call it um, God consciousness. You know, I have a very strict protocol that. When I um, meditate and when I go to sleep, that I protect myself and I, I will only deal with information through my higher self consciousness. Mm. Um, I, I have no wish to channel galactics. <laughs> so that's that's another thing. So 
Mm, there's, there's, a, a there's a lot of channeling of informations. Um, you can channel galactic stuff um, and it, it can be good. Um, I have enough to do within my own capacity with mm. the thoughts that um, come to me, which was the creation of my little book, to deal with that. Mm. And it was mentioned in the last roundtable conversation, and like everyone's got their only little tiny part to do. There's enough room for everyone. And if we can like co-create and mesh and, you know, listen to the messages of one another and see the similarities, uh, healing begins. Mm. Yeah. Holding that position of, of um, non-judgment and pure acceptance is key to being any kind of a, a light being, a light worker, um, a being on earth who's, as you say, a volunteer versus an old soul. It really, it, it labels ultimately are not they're necessary in the first in the first instance to kind of get an idea of where do I fit? And I think a lot of people watching, you know, they, they've come to this position where they're, they've been isolated for so long and unsure of themselves in the spaces that they've been operating in. So a label helps to firstly re-identify who you are or what you want to align mm -hmm. with. Mm. Probably is a better way of putting it. Yeah. Once you've got that framework, then you can start to... Uh, have have a, a container with which to funnel your energy into that makes more sense to you that's aligned with who you are and what you're what you're feeling you're you're here to give the planet um it, it's it's essential then once you've gotten comfortable with that identification to drop the freaking labels right <laughs> because the labels Absolutely. are relevant ultimately it's um, next step I, work yep. with neurodivergent people, right? I, I've been working in the, the medical realms for almost 30 years, the, the medical health realms, and we label everything, right? Um, and one of the biggest issues I had with that was that we label people and then we corral them into just that. Mm. And as a star seed, um, back in the early days, they were called indigo children, uh, crystal children, rainbow children. I was what you would have been categorized as a first wave indigo child because I could see, hear and feel things that weren't there um, since I was five. So by the, by the time you sort of uh, neurodivergence, the medicalization of all of these kinds of illnesses, uh, if my parents had been any different, I would have been committed at 18 years old for the things I was seeing and hearing and feeling. Um, but, you know, the labels help to give you context initially. Mm, but identity. We're into, yep. Yeah, we're moving into this realm now with the ascension, though, that it's time to let go of those labels and start loving everyone and start mm -hmm. appreciating that everybody has their unique gift and their reason for being here on the planet at this point in time, or we wouldn't be here. And exactly. Going off into these fluffy spiritual realms either, you know, that upsets me enormously because spirituality isn't a fluffy endeavor it requires well this is the thing isn't it warriors of light it requires enormous courage to stand in your truth and then speak it to the rest of the world no matter what mm -hmm. that truth is and so finding this um compassion for people where they're at is so important in this age as we move into this next stage of, of evolution mm -hmm. um can we drop the labels starseed awesome go for it mm -hmm. that's the starting point then I, I love that do, you know i love that that's that's exactly right um you just gotta there's like you uh elaborated to that's the wrong word doesn't matter <laughs> <laughs> I don't all the you get, time. Your mean, get my <laughs> meaning um there, there's uh evolutionary jumps within the soul and yes. so it's, yeah i'll take that next step and it's a scary one. Um, but once you do it, it was like, oh, wow, I did that. It wasn't as bad as I thought. Uh, um, so there's evolutionary soul jumps that you, you do and you come along. Um, that's, that's all part and parcel of, of the process. Um, dropping the labels is a, let's just say, um, a level up of frequency. Um, mm -hmm. 
understanding. You can put, a, put more le <laughs> labels on the levels. <laughs> um, just the lessons. It's okay to be who you are. Yeah. And I know um, a couple of souls myself, and they've, they've got a, a, a bunch of kids, and, and they don't think that they're here for a, a purpose because they're, you know, too busy with their children. But their children are the indigos, the star seeds, the, the next level, the next generation. And they're raising these children with the next level of compassion. Mm. You tell me you're not here for a purpose. That, that is the purpose. That's wrong. <laughs> you're here for that purpose, to provide that environment, to sustain, nourish, grow the next generation. Every single person on this planet has their own little thing to um, create. And That's little to... either. Because yeah. without that one person's golden thread of the tapestry of the universe, the tapestry falls apart. It, mm -hmm. that, yeah. is, that, that is the purpose. The purpose is to be here, to grow, to expand, to evolve, to unlock your innate talents, capacities, abilities. And then share that with the world. I don't know of any greater purpose. And it might be raising your child. It might be looking after uh, a rescue dog. You know, it might be bringing the garbage in. It doesn't matter. Yeah. It's about the consciousness levels that you bring to whatever it is that you're doing in the reality that you find yourself in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And well, on that raising dogs, we'll just throw this in here because this, this is part of it. Um, <laughs> What does the Bible say um, about not refusing um, people because you might have entertained an angel? Yeah. Something along yeah. that lines. But th there's also this um, thing that's out there at the moment. It's like extra dimensional things for our consciousness. We might actually see them as a dog, a cat, a bird in the in the in the sky or in the tree, um, something that's hurt or injured on the ground, and to us it's that, but mm. it's actually something else, um, yeah. and we can't perceive it properly because we're not of that uh, consciousness to see through it. But some people can, and they see these things mm. shift and morph, and I was like. That would be scary. <laughs> well, I've been seeing things shift and morph since I was a little girl, and Shay has as well, and so is Veronica. You know, we we've all had those experiences. Um, you know, I remember when I was first starting to channel. Uh, I used to call him the surgeon because I didn't understand. You know, I had as a neurodivergent teenager, I didn't know that I was classified as autistic ADHD back then I just thought I was weird and wrong a lot of the time but you know in one of my big epic meltdowns uh, I ended up mute for a time and this is how you know I ended up channeling because I couldn't talk to humans and then the Galactic Council of 12 came forward at that point and I was given a um, I was assigned a speaker <laughs> and the speaker then assigned me to the surgeon and the surgeon I was I started doing healing work at that point and guiding meditations it wasn't me guiding the meditations it was me working alongside my colleagues in the yeah. other realms to convey information to the people so that they could lift their frequency I now know yeah. that's what it was but at the time um you know seeing things and hearing things that were in alternate dimensions was something you could be committed for, you know. Um, but I think I lost my point. See, ADHD. Yeah. <laughs> Probably why a lot of us have stayed quiet. <laughs> so we don't get um, locked up. <laughs> so. yeah, I mean, I yes. I've got nothing to lose anymore. I think yeah, no. the thing. We, we've got more to lose by staying quiet. Mm -hmm than we do by speaking up now, exactly. especially with the lay of the land the last few years. You know, people are looking for guidance. They're looking for us. Yeah. They're looking for the, the people that make sense to them. Um, mm. And and it's it's time for us to all pull together. Yeah, totally lost my point. It's ADHD. No, that, that's good. And that's exactly what um, Shay was uh, talking about too. <laughs> yes, it was. Let's, let's draw her back in. Yay. <laughs> Can you give us... Um, 
maybe a little bit of uh, knowledge or, about what, what you've been channeling? Um, yeah, so, well, first of all, I think like the main thing now, like um, Christy just said, um, the main thing is just not to deviate away from our souls anymore. So for a period in time, if we look back in history, it was actually one of the, the bigger persecutions along with witch trials and things like that was, was, yeah, being actually excluded from society where it wasn't, where you, you know, when you were um, exiled from society, you were actually, it was one of the biggest traumas because you couldn't survive. So a lot of the shadow patterns from the last epoch were necessary because they were survival patterns but as we're evolving now we need to get to that point like that critical mass where for every person that goes into the higher levels of evolution they bring up 10,000 people for every person that's going up to the next level they bring 10,000 people with them in in mm. every step in evolution and we're getting to that point now that the biggest crime that you really can do is to deviate away from your own soul's truth um I think that like, because being able to go, it, like whether you're channeling your cosmic family or whether you're going straight to the pure channel of straight back to God's source or creator, um, the main thing that we're doing is actually just coming back to that point where we don't deviate from our soul and our truth because that means to be able to, to go to sleep at night is hard you know, because if you're not, if you're, if you have deviated away from your soul's truth, then you can't sleep with yourself because you know, it's not your truth. Whereas now, if you realign back to your soul's truth and you are true to that, you've got the conviction and you've got the integrity and you've got the courage to be true to you, everything else falls into place. And, um, and, and that's the same, you know, all, these neurodivergent or all, all these children like uh, Archie he got expelled today you know of all days he got expelled today it's been oh. coming since he, he's in year eight now it's been coming since he was in kindergarten and forever since he was born I got told you know um, he won't fit into the old system because he's not designed to be there he's born on an eclipse he's born he's Aquarian all the way through <laughs> Pisces moon Aquarius north node Aquarius sun right on the eclipse and he he's shake the ground that he walks on. <laughs> yeah, he does. He's electric. And he's also, and, and trying to fit in um, for him was just torture for him, torture mm. for me. And in the past, like these kids you're working with, Christy, you know, they, um, they, put, they came forward in their contract. They came forward in a time that was hard for them to be them under these labels. And now the reason there's so many of them here on our planet is because they don't, they have that higher frequency. They don't play victim anymore because the old epoch was where we played victim and we had to play victim into a certain extent to our emotions because as a collective, we all agreed, okay, we'll go through this fall, we'll, we'll play victim to our emotions, we'll have that experience. And now we don't play victim anymore because that's being purged out of the entire field. And now we step into higher dimensions of truth, integrity, and it, it does take courage to be there, but mm. it, it's, it's where you're supposed to be. So in another way, being in, a, in alignment to your soul takes courage the steps there can seem terrifying. It can seem lonely for a little while, but then not so much these days because we're, oh, you know, oh. there's so many people there holding you. And, but then when you're there, it's, it's the most freeing spot ever because I know, I think there's one saying that when a man lies to themselves, part of the world dies or part of their soul dies every time they, they're not true to them. And so it's, it is, it's the, the age of freedom because we're moving away from victim or you know all those things and we're stepping in alignment to our truth and um and it, yeah it's it gonna end up more, sorry cut you no off. yeah no <laughs> sorry, it becomes more painful to be out of alignment than it, does, than it does to find the courage and the strength to step into alignment and I think we're all at that level now where it's like mm -hmm. 
there is no deviation allowed because it feels like a sword going through your guts the minute you step outside your knowing you know there's just no alternative anymore the ramifications are hitting people so hard so fast now when they're not in alignment there is no way to just sit comfortably on the sidelines uh it's just gonna hurt (laughs) yeah it just does it just hurts <laughs> I feel sorry for every like I remember that people saying to me, Archie's so lucky to have you as his mum. Because if he was trying, if he had someone that didn't have that awareness, it would be painful for them to watch because they'd be continuously saying, Why can't you just fit in? Why can't you just do it this way? Why can't you? And it's like, mm-hmm. yeah, like, like we were all raised. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Why don't you fit in? Yeah. 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 Yep. In the last 10 or so minutes, um, can we get some perspective from you galactic channelers mm. of what it's like to evolve through your channeling experience? Go, Veronica, you're up. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I just want to go back a little bit um, about labels. Um, I think we'll get to that point. I've always struggled with labels, which I think you guys all have too, um, because I believe that we can all do everything. It's just that we choose the bits we like to do the best or, or the bits that we're, that we're kind of good at. Um, and, and in this lifetime now, we're bringing all of that knowledge from all those lives back to now. Um, but won't it be nice when we get to the point where There is no labels, you know, there's no ADHD kid or, you know, um, or in my case, you know, a disabled person, you know, um, I always used to go, I don't like the label of being disabled, you know, that was my thing. So, um, I call it disabled, differently abled. That's that's kind of nice. That's kind of nice. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. (laughs) So, um, like, I suppose. The galactics, I suppose, have always been with me, you know, even in, in the case of having an imaginary friend, um, because if I believe that that's like a guardian angel in a way, they're, they're there to walk beside you when you feel very alone, you know, and, and I know when I was really little, I'd go and stand outside in the yard. We lived on a, a fairly big, like, farm, and I would stand outside and look up at the sky and say, can I come home yet, you know, like I was three or four. Mm -hmm. Um, what were those moments of acceptance that get you transcending that point look I probably felt very um alone most of my life even as a little kid I would prefer to hang hang out with the adults you know um because I I didn't feel like a child Mm. it's really hard to so you felt like um your intellectual capacities were more aligned Mm. with um, people of higher thought yeah and I love even now I love I love sitting down with an elderly person and listen to their stories I just find everybody's got stories of course um and there's look there's more people out there that are connected to galactics than you know or or don't like to admit it you know I've even got friends who have uh, had the experience of going up you know being um i suppose what you'd call um uh, abducted yeah and brought back um so you know that's why i think we have this these two sides of the galactic races that you know some people see them as as beautiful and kind and loving and others see them as threatening and scary you know um for me they've always been kind and loving um and uh, you know like I suppose it's all been um, a process, you know, like when I first got lupus, I couldn't talk. I I lost, basically lost my voice. And so I went looking for, because I, you know, went down the path of, you know, take what the doctor said. And boy, oh boy, you know, I was like 130 kilos and I thought I was going to die from a drug overdose, really, from, you know, um, prescription drugs. Um, And so I started like doing my own research looking and um, I found that a piece of lapis, you know, I wore a piece of lapis around my <laughs> throat for two years, never took it off. And my voice came back, you know, and so I went, oh, there's something in this, you know. So I, um, of course, then, yeah. It, 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 just to, to 
bringing in a little bit, Veronica, is mm. the, the, the ability to heal yourself and come back from that. Was mm. this a direct result of your ability to hear an information like intuitively from galactic people, from, from those beings? How was your experience of actually channeling galactic information? And, and is this how you use that information? I guess uh, I didn't know it was galactic information. I, would, right. I always knew I had somebody there that was pushing me in a particular way, you know, and, and I've always found that um, uh, what I suppose life has always opened a doorway when I needed it, um, and but I've never admitted it. I, I was actually, I, I remember when I first learned angelic Reiki because you learn to work with the, the, uh, the galactics um, I went, no, I'm not doing that because, you know, I, I was at that ego-based point where I believed there was only earthlings. And, you know, right. and, and later on I thought to myself, well, wow, how arrogant is that? You know, like God made this, you know, enormous universe filled with so many galaxies and on that little blue planet down there, you well, just put some people on that. <laughs> and I went, hmm. <laughs> so, and then, then uh, uh, this galactic being was like trying to get in touch with me and, wanted to work with me in, in healing work and things. And, and I just kept saying no. And, and a friend of mine had an aura camera and I, and I went to a show she was at and, um, and she did a, a, a you know, a, a, a photo of me and she goes, Oh, look at that in your crown chakra. There's a little galactic being that wants to connect, but you keep frightening him away. And I went, how did she know that? You know, like, so then I went, so I just, I, I just welcomed him in and, you know, of course, you know, put up your own protection and only, um, um, you know, talk to or, or or work with beings of love and light, you know. Um, and he came in and started to, when I do healing work, he would stand on the other side of the table. <clears throat> and um, then the Pleiadians, because I resonate with the Arcturians uh, and he's Arcturian. Um, and, um, but then later on, the Pleiadians started to come in. Of course, they're the healers. <clears throat> and um, they've started to teach me things, um, you know, and they, they've, they've got the big long fingers and show you how to do surgery. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, and of late, they're showing me how to use the um, the med beds in 5G, which is really interesting. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, <laughs> yeah. Apparently. <laughs> they're going, shut up. <laughs> Yeah. Um, too many secrets. Your, your thing, man. Look, I look, I'm I know that that um look for me to even talk about them, I used to think I was crazy. And then of course the skulls uh, of course, you know, because there are 13 skulls buried in the earth, you know, that that are that are galactic. So from the different galactic races. And there've been three found um so far. So as we um I suppose, uh, grow in our own, um, as a planet, as we grow as a planet, um, another skull will be um, brought out um, to give more um, information. So um, I, I have one skull that was attuned with one of those skulls, right? And, um, and it's a bit of a chatterbox. She is a chatterbox a lot. Um, and they do, look, it's just what, I suppose, um, for everybody, I say, if you, you know, whoever you want to connect with, whether it be ascended beings or um, galactics or archangels, um, meditate. Yeah, I mean, and you know. on that, uh, I'll throw in, uh, when you're there too, mm. um, you know the difference between the beings from a feeling not necessarily what they look like, right? Yeah, and, and a look, but um, I have to yeah. say, um, when you're working with true, pure galactic beings, the love that, that they mm. give to you is, I just call it heart exploding. Mm -hmm. It's like, um, and, you know, that uh, I know a lot of people have been going through grief and things because the heart is your anchor, you know, really. Um, I was taught that your heart is basically your new base chakra as we open up more chakras above the the heart is our anchor okay um and and that heart when we've had a hurt we'll close that down a lot of times we'll 
you know, like with a loss of, of you know, a loved one we'll, or even a, a romantic loss, we'll start to shut our heart down. So then, of course, in some way, how we're given to reopen it is, is another hurt. So they try to crack our heart open because now that's what we need. And, and probably the, the most powerful time of, um, of feeling that like huge expanding heart uh, where it really kind of ached, you know, like was they showed me that, you know, and, and a lot of times that was when I was um, I was lying in a hospital in ICU, you know, and, and they were telling my kids I wasn't making it. And I'm laying there going, oh, I think I'm staying, you know, like, um, but this this love that came from them, it's a bit like if any of you um, work with Jesus and Mary or Mary Magdalene or Mother Mary, it's the same, it's that same feeling. So um, I think that's really, really key is to talk about what it feels like to connect yeah. with these mm. beings because, um, you know, in the early days, you know, for me, I did get both sides, right? Yeah, you, can, yeah. you can tell the difference between a benevolent galactic mm. and one who's out to get you, you know, yeah. uh, the, the darkness of the ones that come in, it's, it's, you can't get confused by that. So no. if anybody out there is starting to, to explore channeling, there's a couple of different types of channeling too. And I think this isn't talked about, um, you know, we all channel differently. Mm. Uh, there is channeling via um, your psychic capacity, being able to tune into the lower realms of existence, the lower uh, frequencies that are sort of just above earth frequency, if you like, mm -hmm. or just above humanity uh, yeah. in terms of uh, density. You know, there are the psychic realms, there are galactic realms, but the channeling experience is different for everybody. I started channeling in the sense that it was a knowing that just dropped in and I was aware of simultaneous lifetimes and simultaneous spatial realities yeah. all at once. And the information comes in, um, in a droplet, like eons of time and energy and, and information in mm -hmm. one droplet, in one second, in one split moment, but it filters through the intellect. So mm -hmm. one of the important things with channeling is to remove your freaking ego out of the way and, and just sort of let the purity of the message come through you. But as a, as a human, we have to translate the meaning of the information that we're getting into yeah. language that people can understand. So your ability to translate uh, a download um, requires you to be really super centered, super poised, you know, ego aside, an open vessel for information in a mm. pure sense. Um, so that's the intellectual way, you know, downloading information. A lot of people have downloaded information in the form of intuition. Intuition is as much information gathered from the ether as it is your own lifetimes of experience in this body because your cells remember that information even yeah. if you don't intellectually and then you've got your your channeling where you're actually embodying a presence um which is what i do these days uh with a um I don't even know what to call her exactly an an entity if you like called amara and amara drops in she doesn't come in from outside me she comes from oh, the within. nexus of the fabric of time and space from the inside through me she doesn't come from outside me in she's not taking over my body she mm -hmm. is i'm going in and connecting with her and then she's emerging through me um and so now it's a case of i I don't translate what she's saying anymore. She speaks through me. So yeah. it's, there's lots of different kinds of, of channeling. So for those people out there listening, um, what kind of channeling are you experiencing already? Mm. There are layers, there are levels. How comfortable are you with it? How willing are you to embrace the information? But we're, we've all said the same thing. The information should feel like um, for me, I like the heart exploding, but for me, it's, it's champagne bubbles and giggles when Amara comes in. She's all mm. so light and happy and beautiful and vibrant and creative and expressive and musical that I just start giggling. Her energy is just woo, it's so bubbly. Yeah. Um, Shay, what happens with you yes. with your channel? Yeah, same. Like, like, yeah, same. I was just uh, as well, like you guys said, there's just no confusion between the benevolence and the not and, and the pure beings because um, 
you know, one thing for me was I always saw, I always, I come to this realization that some of the non-benevolent AI, they actually are very sophisticated at the third eye, like completely mm. intelligent, like so intelligent that they're good at trickery and bribery, but what they don't have, they don't have love and, and heart. And, and like we've said, mm. like the heart is the most important center because even after the journey from the, from the base through to the crown, the longest journey then is from the crown back to the heart and that's where it stays. And everything that's sacred and organic in the multiverse has a soul and has a heart. Everything that's inorganic and in that non-benevolent timeline, like AI timeline, doesn't have that. And so when it's a non-benevolent coming in, they use the same. They can use the intelligent, like, you know, mm -hmm. can use intelligent manipulation and bribery, but there's no soul or feeling. But when it's a soul that's benevolent coming, you just know instantly mm. because they, they touch your heart. Yeah. And, and, when I put people through even crystal dreaming, um, you know, which is first of all, clearing soul retrieval for any major traumas or healing contracts. But then at the end, it's bringing in the, your beings that love you unconditionally. And sometimes the ascended masters will come in. And when Jesus or Mary Magdalene comes in, and I say to the person in the session, do you want to ask Jesus a message? There's not even words because they're just lying there crying yeah. and they're like bawling and they're yeah. like, he's not saying anything. He's just here. And, and there's not, there's no, there's nothing even to say because it's just mm. like he's taken you and he's shown you the source of love and, and then there doesn't need to be words. Um, yeah. yeah. So yeah, words are overrated. <laughs> words, are, words are overrated. <laughs> I, um, I, I'm not Catholic. Well, wasn't brought up Catholic and, um, and but I really love antiques and vintage things, and I love a lot of the um, um, Christian relics, if you like antiques. And and I found this beautiful image of Jesus, and um, it's in my office, and um, it's probably from the 1940s. And and I was talking to your girlfriend who's who's Catholic, and I said, "Yeah, I got this really lovely image of Jesus." And she goes, "What's it look like?" I said, "Oh, well, he's like got this big fiery heart on his chest, and he's like pointing at his heart." And she goes, um, she told me what it was, which is in um, the Catholic faith, it's called Sacred Heart. And I went, well, to me, it just means he is showing you this is the way, like through your heart, you know, this is the way you go within, but you, you're, you've you just got to find your way through that self-love and through love of just being here, really. Um, so, I, you know, I thought oh, that was really cool. I didn't know what it was called, but there you go, Sacred Heart. And that's why there's also uh, a white dove that symbolizes spirit. Yeah. Um, yeah. But just on that, we, we come up to our uh, time. We're mm. just going over over the hour now. And Christy and needs one, to... My little tip before we have to go is if people are, are beginning to channel, I would say intention is direction. Mm. And mm. before you go anywhere, so if you bring fear into, if you're a fearful person, you're not sure what you're going to go to, make sure that you set an intention to go to the most pure part of yourself. Yeah. Protect that in the way that you want and then expand that and mm. off you go. So I'd like to thank all the... Um, can, 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 can I... Um, before we go, can Christy needs to let people know where they can find her because she didn't do that earlier, I think. Because <laughs> I got cut off. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let's go around one more time. Yeah. Anyway, um, so to find me, I'm Christy Christy Rackham on Facebook. Uh, it's probably the easiest way to find me. Um, I also have ChristyLeeRackham.com if you'd like to book a free discovery call with me about my work with neurodivergent adults and teens. Um, neurodivergent being the label uh, that once we've, we've had a conversation, we, we find out what their new unique uh, skill set is so that they can start to embrace themselves, uh, step into their power, their unique reason for being here, and um, support those those uh, magnificent humans to you know really help us shift the planet. I believe that's what neurodivergent people are here for. Mm. Uh, so yeah, thank you. I'd love to chat with some more people about all this stuff. It's so cool.
Veronica, do you want to reiterate where you can be found and Shane and Craig as well? Uh, I'm Veronica Rawlinson on Facebook. Um, I've got an Instagram account, but I don't use it very often. And um, it's veronicarawlinson.com. So, yeah, on the website, you can find me there. Thank you. All right. Shay? Hi. Um, yeah, Shay Bailey on Facebook, um, Instagram as well. I'm Astra Healing, Astra Healing Shay, and my website's astrahealing.com.au. And for myself, Craig Atchison at Facebook, I have a page, Magnetic Transformations on Facebook. Um, I have a group, Spiritually Connected Australia on Facebook, and I have an Instagram, um, Craig, uh, Magnetic underscore um good questions uh, i've forgotten them basically i'm going to be hard to get a hold of i'm not on um social I'm not going to be here on yeah and i'll right. work out my my so business got an extra one. You. yes we got another little star seed oh look he popped in and popped back yeah, out that was cool yeah. Um, so thank you for all the people visiting here today. Well, thank you for all my guest authors for coming in and um, speaking. It's been a great session. Good fun. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Craig. Thank you, everybody. Bye, Bye our watchers. <laughs> <laughs>